Hello guys, welcome back to Oxangel RC. I have decided to finally make an updated video about my ground station setup since so many of you are constantly asking about it. And even though I have a video about that, things are evolving and changing all the time. So this is an up to date one. Also setting up the ground station on location and actually filming the components in detail were done on two separate days. Hence why the backgrounds are different, but the system is all the same. If any of the items shown in the video are of any interest to you guys, you can find the links in the description below. Most of those would be affiliate links and using them to purchase anything from those websites would result in a small commission for me at no additional cost to you, which really does help support this channel and my family as this is pretty much my full time job. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try to answer to the best of my ability, but please watch the whole video before asking. Also, recently I've managed to tidy up this ungodly chaos into this neat and tidy setup and I do like how everything has its place and it's so neat and arranged. The case was sort of meant for that but there are more changes to be done to it so it will be even more useful and setting up my ground station could take even less time. But anyway, those are things to come, let's focus on what it is right now. So, first item on the table is my Tyrannis radio, which is a first generation unit X9D, no plus at the end, from the very first batch out of the factory all those years ago. Only thing I've changed on it have been a new case, whole sensor sticks and a 6 position switch, which I never use. All else has been perfect so far. On the back I usually have whatever module I am using for the particular model. In this case that is the 900MHz Dragonlink system for the duck. Next up is the main monitor that I use, the Skyzone HDO2. I've had this for a few years as well and absolutely love it. It is bright and has a crisp image, although the screen is kinda reflective, but you learn to work around that so I've not really had any issues in this regard. Only issue I had with it was the integrated DVR, which stopped working pretty quickly, so I've been using this externally mounted Ichin EV100 unit connected to the monitor's outputs, and it has worked well so far. I power it with 5 volts via the micro USB port. Then we get to the heart and soul of my long range capabilities, the MyFly Dream Antenna Tracker. It's sporting a Boscam FR632 receiver and a triple feed patch array antenna which has been absolutely brilliant, especially for its size and price. The antenna is mounted directly to the receiver which is strapped to the tracker which then outputs the video to another 5.8GHz video transmitter and each in TX801 running at 5mW output and on a different frequency sporting a left hand polarized antenna as opposed to the right hand polarized polarized ones I use on the tracker and planes. It transmits to the Skyzone HDO2 monitor which is also equipped with the left hand cloverleaf antenna. So no cables here. I am using the monitor's built in receiver to see the video feed, hence also why I am able to output it to an external DVR. And so we come to the power bit of the ground station. The tracker, the monitor, the charger and whatever else needs to be powered get their juice from this thing, my DIY solar generator power station. It is literally at the heart of all of this powering pretty much everything. It has two 12 volt outputs, two dual USB outputs for charging smaller batteries, phones, tablets and whatever else, a main cutoff switch, a power meter to keep track of power coming in and going out as well as battery capacity and last but not least a bug boost module which can output whatever I set it to up to 32 volts and 10 amps via those two potentiometers. I've got two dedicated outputs for it on the side of the box. Right next to those is another important aspect of the solar generator, the solar panel input. The solar panel I am using is a 100 watt foldable panel, though in reality I've rarely seen it go anything notable above 80 watts, but even so it has worked well since I got it and generates plenty of power for all my needs, including charging those flight batteries. The solar generator has a 12 volt 66 amp hour 18650 lithium ion battery in it, which works out to about 790 watt hours, 
of usable capacity, all in that very small and compact box. Good news is, all of this, bulky as it looks right now, packs up pretty neatly in the back of my rather small car, with table and solar panel taking up some space in the back seats, but overall I'm super happy with this setup and how this is coming together. But we'll keep on improving it, because there is a good deal more to be done to optimize it, make it even more compact, but just as useful, and quicker and easier to deploy or pack up. The solar generator will get its own video, probably one of the next few, so subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications just in case you haven't already. Also like, share and just engage with this video in any way you see fit as this helps my channel a lot. A big thank you to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and will continue to do so. Happy and safe flying and until next time.